Hello, hello, hello! You're tuning into another episode of The Wonder Can Show. Today's New Year topic, because it is a new year, 2024 is here. Richard Sherman triples down on Lamar Jackson not being the MVP. <laughs> Bro! <laughs> listen, that, listen, that man said the year changed, but my opinion did not. <laughs> so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the clip. It's like a three minute clip. Then we're gonna break it down. All right, cuz <laughs> I was just like bruh. This man said nope. 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 So let's play it and then we'll break it down. All right No, it did not because the the fact of the matter remains the same for me that that, that didn't move the needle It was a fantastic performance by Lamar Jackson at a time his team needed it, it was a statement game late in the season in December you got to give him all the credit in the world, but the five touchdowns in this game against the Miami Dolphins, as crazy as it sounds, Skip, are almost as many as he had in the months of both September and November combined. In those m months combined, he had six touchdowns passing. And so when you, when you look at the full picture, I just don't see it. And again, people argue with me and they're like, man, you're just hating. I don't see how I'm hating. I'm just... Laying out the facts of the matter. If you're he not had hating, thirty I'll touchdowns. I'll be the first to say you're not hating. Go ahead. No. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think I, because I think he's a fantastic. I thought that was an unbelievable game. I thought he played really well against San Francisco. I think he's having a really good season. It's just when he had his MVP season and it was unanimous. So you got to put an asterisk next to that because it was so outstanding that it was he was the first unanimous MVP in the history. Wrong. Of the he was he second behind Tom Brady. Passes. This year, he had 1,200 rushing yards. You look at it, he has about 843 or so this year. And so I don't see it as the same in that respect. And people are like, well, he should get MVP because of what? If the numbers aren't there, then there's not much to say. People were like, they were comparing it to the Peyton Manning season of 2008. I mean, that season, he had six fourth quarter comebacks. Uh, he led the league in QBR. There were things that happened late in that year. That, that kind of pushed him over the top, but the stats weren't necessarily there. And again, that was 15 years ago. If I look at the last 20 MVPs of the National Football League, three of them being running backs, you had all day Adrian Peterson. Mm -hmm. 2,000 yards. yards. You had Ladanian with 31 total touchdowns. You had Sean Alexander with 28 total touchdowns. But outside of that, it's been quarterbacks. And those quarterbacks, there's only been three. Three. And two of them were co-MVPs in 2000. Three, and that was Steve McNair and Peyton Manning. They had 29 total touchdowns for Steve McNair, 28 for Peyton, and they were co-MVPs. And then you have the 2008 Peyton season where he had 28 total touchdowns. And that's it. Everybody else had above 30 touchdowns. And so if you're going to tell me there was an MVP 20 years ago, they, were, they shared it, and then Peyton Manning 15 years ago, out of all the quarterbacks that have won it, and that's it, Nobody else has had less than 30 touchdowns in the last decade, in the last two decades. Then I'm going to say I would assume they would stick to that. Listen, I'm, that's all I'm going to go to. But this is why he deserves this wholehearted 2024 first time backhand slap. Backhand oh! side. Let me tell you why he deserves that. I'm going to break it down why. Because what Richard is doing, he is changing and warping the narrative so you can understand and agree with his point. Instead of just showing you everything because it could askew his point. So, <laughs> and I know he would love this if he was sitting right next to me, right? <clears throat> Tom Brady, Tom Brady, if no one understands this, did not win MVP in his last season in the league. Tom Brady, if I'm not mistaken, led the league in passing touchdowns, passing yards, all that stuff. The numbers that he had was ridiculous. He didn't win. He didn't win. Because context matters. Do you know why Lamar, even, even with those low numbers, numbers across the board have been down this year. Numbers across the board. And you have to realize and take into consideration that Lamar Jackson has sat out an additional, what, three fourth quarters this year? And he's not going to play the last game of the season this year? All of that compounds to why his stats are always suppressed. He brings up the 36 touchdowns. The 36 touchdowns should have been 44. How many games were the Ravens up in the third quarter? 
beginning of the third quarter, and, and Lamar Jackson was sitting on the sideline. Lamar Jackson is his MVP year. If you want true context, missed an, a, 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 um, a total of about two and a half games worth of time. And he still led the league in passing touchdowns. That's why he won. He's been holding back. He held back against Miami. My, tell me right now, if Richard Sherman sees this, excuse me, Richard Sherman, Sherman, tell me right now, honestly, he couldn't have had seven touchdowns in that game. He could have. He sat down. He sat down. And to, and to show you how crazy it is, he wasn't the only quarterback to have a perfect passer rating. Because Huntley had a perfect passer rating in that game, too. <laughs> one and one, baby, and it went for a touchdown. Talk about high efficiency. It's context. Lamar, listen, and I've said this. See, everybody that watches this, you see everything that I'm saying coming full circle, right? You see how everything that I'm saying is coming full circle. Why I wanted Lamar to put his foot down their throats every chance that he gets because that becomes a talking point. Now that he's up for the MVP, you're starting to see how everyone is starting to change the narratives. They're starting to be like, bro, that's a two-time MVP. Historically, he he would be, a, a, a um, he's already bound for Canton. People are already saying that. But what did I tell you guys? You guys are, no, 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 no. All we care about the Super Bowl because you're thinking about it from a fan's perspective. You're not looking at it from the betterment of the player after everything is said and done. You're not looking at it from a macro, like a macro uh, uh, hole. You're not doing that. You're only looking at it through a box, through one lens. Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. And Lamar's looking at it like that too. But understand that after those things are done, the story of his legacy is in the hands of these idiots. And I say idiots because we've heard, we've seen them double, triple down, quadruple down, everything down when it comes to Lamar. He can't throw. Like he has the, he has the, he's tied for the most uh, uh, perfect games ever. Patrick Mahomes doesn't even have one. Ah, uh, yeah, but that's not that much. He threw for 36 times. Ah, uh, that's only one season. He has two MVPs. Ah, uh, that didn't count. They, you see how he tried to say an asterisk next to his, because that's what they were saying. When, when Lamar had one MVP, they were saying, well, that was one season, and they figured him out. So, yeah, that was an aberration. That didn't really, really count. He came out of nowhere, hit, the, uh, hit the, the league in the mouth, and he hasn't been able to reach that, so we're not worried about him no more. But two MVPs. It is a whole other thing to askew that narrative because like I told y'all on this channel, there's never been a two-time MVP award winner that has not made it to Canton. So they would have to change everything. Everything. And to say that he gets a Super Bowl and a Super Bowl MVP this year too, whoo, kiss it goodbye. That's why I've said what I've said. Everything that we've talked about has come full circle. It's a reason. I told y'all about the O-line, right? I told y'all about the O-line. I told you about the MVP at the beginning. I said, I got him, I'm got a winning MVP. Right? I got the Bengals not making the playoffs. There's a couple things I've been wrong on. Like Tank Dell not getting 1,200 yards, but that's because he got injured. He was on pace for it. And we don't know if the Bills make the playoffs yet. We got to wait and see what they do against Miami. But it looks like I'm going to be wrong about that one too. So I'm not perfect, but overall, the stuff for the Baltimore Ravens, I've been pretty darn spot on. You got to look. You have to have foresight to see how people move. I don't know if y'all ever played chess. You have to play two steps ahead. Some people play three, four steps ahead. You got to. I see how they pivot to their arguments. I see it. Now they're saying, oh, well, you know, he doesn't really deserve it. You know, you're just getting it because he just... Now they turned it into the Heisman. They've been doing the, the, the MVP award like that. They've been doing it like that. But now, because it's Lamar, it's all... We don't like that it's like that because it's him. They don't want to accept his greatness. That's why the word that I keep using when it comes to Lamar, Demetrius Jackson, you understand where I'm coming from? Is undeniability. 
it's not enough that Lamar Jackson's good. It's not even enough that he's great. It's not even enough that he's one of one. He has to become undeniable. He has to become more than a man. You ever you ever watch The Dark Knight when you have to become almost like a symbol? That's that's what's on Lamar Jackson's plate. He does not get graded like his contemporaries. Think about it. Every time he's blown out a team, it's excuses. It's not, yo, Lamar Jackson's played great. No, it's not like that. It's That was just the team not even showing up. You know what I'm saying? They didn't do nothing to show up and make this competitive. Or he threw it like, oh, he got hot and stuff. Think he has one of the greatest quarterback performances of all time. And they don't even bring it up. Y'all forget. He's, oh, we don't know if he can come from behind. You forget the Colts game? When he came from behind, went into overtime, and then took victory from their mouth? No, you don't get to take victory. That's all my, I mean, I, 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 I ate it right in front of them. Barbecue chicken. They don't even bring it up. To them, just like him, it's an aberration, an anomaly. It happened, but ah, it's one of those things where you see once in a um, once in your lifetime and you know it'll probably never happen again. That's why they chalk up everything when it comes to him. That's why he has to have this stuff. I'm not even, look, I don't even argue with people like Richard Sherman because he's going to stand on his bias regardless of what you say. And to be fair, we're humans. We all have our biases. You know what I'm saying? He wants someone from the 49ers to win it. <laughs> I promise you, if it wasn't one of the people for the 49ers that are up for this, he'd be like, yeah, Lamar got it. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But because he's so pro 49ers, that's all his lens can see. Okay, everybody has biases. I have biases, you have biases. It's annoying that this is one of his biases, but it is what it is. The most annoying ones are the ones that are trying to act like they knew this that, that this was coming. Like you have Acho sitting there trying to be like, oh, I picked him to an MVP this year. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I was right. While every week from the beginning of this season, you have berated that man. Taking shots at that man. Saying that he's not playing up the par. Saying that this quarterback's better. That quarterback's better. Every quarterback's better. Oh, but I picked him to win MVP. No. What you did was you hedged your bet. So that's what I'm saying, guys. Look, I I know. I know. Watching the Wonder Can show, you guys like, yo, you're pro Lamar. I'm, I'm pro the, the what Lamar Jackson stands for. You understand where I'm coming from? That's what I'm pro. I didn't grow up next to him. But what he represents, that's what I'm all for. When you talk about a Lamar Jackson, you are looking at a player that is intelligent but authentic, authentically him. He doesn't deviate for anybody's likes. He's a Christian man, faith-driven, hardworking determined when I say listen I, and I want to break you know what I'm gonna say this for another episode when I break down just what an anomaly in Lamar Jackson is but that's what I that's why it's just that he also because he's a symbol of what the league does not like or does not accept they throw darts at it and they don't stop so for him to be sustainable in the minds of the media and in his legacy. That means, remember, his legacy is our legacy. He's a Baltimore Raven. He's not making his stuff over for the 49ers. That's his legacy. It's our legacy. You get it? That's where my mind is at. So when they're telling his story, they're telling the Baltimore Raven story. Our story. You want them doing to him like they did to Cam? And some of these other guys? No. I don't want that. I want him to be revered. I want him to be remembered. Because guess what? At the end of the day, that's the power of the media. They write your story. 
And if you do not believe it, look at the stories that they wrote about Kobe. Remember, when Kobe Bryant was there, he was never the greatest guy with the media. Look at the stories they did about Kobe. Look at the stories they said about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is a top three NBA player of all time. Isaiah Thomas beat Isaiah Thomas beat Bird, Magic, and Jordan. And I'm a Jordan guy. Look what they did to his legacy. <laughs> You understand? But what do you guys think? Do you agree with Richard Sherman that, hey, maybe even if it was, it should be a co-MVP? Or do you believe that Lamar Jackson is him? He's been the MVP and he's proven it and he's shown it at the most opportune times. Let me know what you think down in the comment section, please, all right? But as always, that's an episode of the Wonderkind Show. <laughs> Thank you for watching. And how we get down, we have fun and we laugh. And everything we talk about rooted in what? Facts and truth. Before we go any further, I just want to give a shout out and a thank you to a donation that was made by Patri uh, Patricia Hansen. Patricia Hansen with a $20 donation. <laughs> Are you here? First donation of 2024. Patricia, thank you so much. I know how hard it is to make money right now. Inflation got us struggling. <laughs> but thank you for supporting this channel. Thank you for supporting what we're trying to build over here. Because we're, we're going to build that Wonderkin network one way or the other. So thank you so much. But if you would like, if, 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 you, if you've read the description and stuff like that, check out the Wonderkin Show's Patreon, right? There's three tiers. Content goodness, wait for your consumption. Give it a look, give it a try. Let me let me know what you think. But if you want to donate, like you've seen Patricia and so many other people have done, at the bottom of the screen is a QR code. QR code to a cash app. Cash app located in the description of every video that we do. And the name of it is Money Sign, The Wonderkin Show. Super easy. But once again, this is The Wonderkin Show. This is your host, Nitro. And as always, you know my slogan. Peace. And I am out of here. Finish him, Daddy. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah!